Hello everybody, this is Jeff Janess, and welcome to our third optional lab exercise as we review ways to make our maps more interesting and readable. So far in these optional labs, we've been looking at how we can make labels more distinctive by using a variety of formatting styles within a single label. We've also been looking at how to perform mathematical operations in a label so that they report data that aren't actually in the feature class originally. Now these are cool things, but one downside to them is that any labeling instructions we set up automatically apply to all features. What do we do if we want to set up different sets of instructions for different groups of features? You know, maybe we want to map cities. We want to make the labels bigger if the city has a larger population. Or maybe we want the labeling instructions to change depending on the map scale so that if we zoom in, we get different information reported in the label. Now in this lab, we're going to look at how text formatting can be constructed differently for different groups of features where each group is defined by a SQL query. We've already seen how to construct symbology and format labels in general, so this example is not going to ask you to do that again. Instead, we're going to look at an effective example created by Esri where they use label classes to symbolize and label U.S. major highways. And in this demonstration, I'm going to be using ArcGIS Pro version 3.3.1. Alright, so let's start by loading our U.S. major highways layer. I've got this stored in the additional data folder in the G class GIS data. Let's just go in there. And we want to load this layer file, the Esri Data US Freeways Symbolize.lyrx. By loading the layer file rather than the actual data, we'll also load up Esri symbology and labeling instructions. So let's add that to a new map. I'm going to add a general base map real quick just so we have something to look at behind it. Just click this. I think for this demonstration, I'll just use the topographic one. Okay, now, we've got it loaded up. There's a few things I want you to notice. First off, you can see all the roads, but there are no labels on this map. Secondly, there's six classes of highway in this feature class. So we're looking at six different symbols. You can also see this if you open up the symbology pane for this layer. You'll see the six symbols right here. You might also notice this is kind of interesting. The data itself doesn't have county highway written into it. doesn't have interstate. Instead, it has a code letter. So it only has these codes. You can set up your own legend label for these codes in the symbology window. And that's what Esri did. Anyway, let's zoom into this layer. Let's zoom into about 1 to 11 million. Let's zoom into the Los Angeles area. Okay, notice that something has changed. Now we are seeing symbolized labels for the freeways. All of these blue shields are freeway IDs. So all of a sudden labels have appeared just because we have zoomed into a particular scale. Next, let's zoom in again to Los Angeles at say one to six million. Okay, notice that now we have additional labels appearing. So these red roads now have labels. The freeways and the red roads have labels, but the lighter colored brown roads do not have labels. All right, let's zoom in one more time to one to 500,000. Okay, zooming into the LA area, and now notice that even the little roads have labels. So now we have three types of labels appear based on six different highway types, and each set of labels appeared at different scales. So this is an example of making your labeling rules responsive to the scale of the map, and also to be able to assign certain labels to groups of features. So I mentioned that we have three label styles. How do we assign those three labeling styles to these six different classes of highway? We do this by setting up what we call label classes. All right, so let's go to the labeling tab. We've got the layer selected, we hit labeling. Now notice that this little labeling region up here has something called a class. If we click the down arrow, we see that Esri has created three different label classes. Now, what is a class? Let's first click on the interstate highways class and, and take a close look at this. Let's open up the SQL query window. And actually, you may have noticed that if you click on any of these options over here, you always open up the same labeling pane here. It's just you open up to different parts of it. 
So the SQL query is how we select the features that this particular label class applies to. In this case, the Interstate Highways class is defined by all those features where the class attribute field is equal to I. This means interstate. If we change our class to US Highways, that's these rows with the the these red rows with this shield here. In this case, that's defined by all those rows where class is equal to U. And if we choose other highways, we see this one is a little more complicated. This is all of those rows where the class is not equal to I, which is the interstate, not equal to U, which is this US highway, and not equal to O. O is this off interstate business. So that means this class could be state highways, none, or county highways. So all of three of those values are getting wrapped into this particular labeling style. And then we can take a look at the labeling symbology that's used for each label class. We just hit the symbol. We see that uh, this class, other highways, is symbolized this way. If we change the class to the US highways, we can see that that one is symbolized this way. Then the interstates are symbolized with this shield. In all cases, the number that is getting written into this symbol, let me just open, make it a little bit bigger, this number 90 here, this is being drawn from the attribute field number. So if we come over to here, we can see that the label expression is just using the attribute field called number. So that's what's getting written into the symbol. So that just goes to show how we can set up three different label classes and set up a different labeling style for each of those classes. Now, another cool thing here is that we can also set scale dependency rules for each class. We come over back to the class here. Amongst these symbols here, we choose this one. This lets us set the visibility range. So right now we're looking at interstate highways. Click this. So the interstate highway labels are only going to be shown if you're zoomed in closer to 1 to 15 million. If you're out past that, say 1 to 20 million, then the labels don't show. Uh, if we switch this to the US highways, these only show if we're zoomed in to 1 to 10 million or closer. And the other highways, that's these little numbers here, they'll only show if we're zoomed in closer than 1 to 5 million. So we can set both symbology styles and scale dependencies within each label class. All right, so this lab exercise was really just taking a look at something that already exists. So we've done that. Feel, please feel free to set up label classes for your own data. And you can apply all the complex formatting tags and mathematical operations and labels to each different label class if you like as well. All right, thanks so much everybody. Take care, bye-bye.